What's going on y'all? Welcome back to the channel. In the middle of grilling some steaks for dinner, waiting for the grill to warm up. Thought I'd take a minute here and just answer a question here from a reader subscriber to the channel and the blog. And this has to do with the 401k. And I think this is such a great question, especially right now with the economy, what's going on with the stock market. Just, you know, we're, we're in crazy times, continue to be in crazy times. So I think this question is relevant for a lot of people right now that are investing in their 401k. So here's the question it says, hi Jeff, I've been racking my brain for a few months about what to do with my 401k and if I should keep contributing. Do you have any advice on that or how else I should be saving that money? So scary not knowing what this economy is doing and we are not rich by any means. Uh, can you relate to that? Can you relate to that? I know whenever I was saving in my 401k, my Roth IRA felt like I was running on a treadmill, not making any progress. So totally get it and it is crazy times you know right now the economy is all over the place but the one thing I, I will address with that is the economy is going to be all over the place for the rest of our lives there's always going to be uncertainty and it's how you weather that storm it's how you stay patient how you stay disciplined that really matters in these times so the one thing you know I actually just recorded a video talking about you know if you want changes if you don't like where you're at, if you're not comfortable with where you're at, then you really have three options. You know, one option is to do nothing. And just to address that, so pulling up chat GPT to help me out here, I don't know how much they have in their 401k, but let's assume that they've got $50,000 saved in their 401k. Let's assume that they're 30 years old. If you just let that money sit, making 8% interest in 30 years, you're gonna have over $511,000 in retirement. So that's over half a million dollars. If you're age 30, make it 8%. So that's doing nothing. And so then what else could you do? Well, you could stop, you know, you could do nothing, stop contributing. Uh, you could reduce how much you're contributing. So just imagine if you're gonna have a half a million not doing anything, if you just continue to add extra 50, 100 bucks a month, that's obviously going to be a whole lot more than half a million dollars over 30 years. Or you can make some big changes. Now with the big changes, uh, I don't know, that could be cashing out your 401k. I don't think that is a, a wise option. Other options could include, and I think these could be smart decisions if you really aren't confident in your 401k, if you're just not comfortable with the market, comfortable with the economy, is instead of contributing to your 401k, maybe you start paying off debt. Maybe that's student loan debt. Maybe that's credit card debt. Maybe that's paying off your house so that you are completely mortgage free and you want to do a Dave Ramsey debt free scream. I'm debt free! Uh, these are all options that you can consider. Uh, I, I think that's a, that's a wise option, you know, paying off debt just so that you don't have to worry about those payments anymore. So that's an option. Another option is if you want to invest outside your 401k. Now you could go to a Roth IRA if you want to have more access to your money that would be contributing to some sort of taxable brokerage account that could be buying individual stocks, mutual funds, ETF, something like the S&P 500, or if you wanna buy some dividend stocks like the dividend aristocrats, which have a history of increasing their dividends over an extended period of time. So those are options. You could still invest into cryptocurrency. Those are options. Um, if you wanna get into real estate, uh, maybe you wanna start doing Airbnb. Maybe you wanna buy duplexes, townhomes. You wanna go that route, like those are options that you could consider and then you also have one of my favorite options and that's just investing in to yourself so what would that mean maybe that's going back to school getting a degree maybe it's getting a master's degree or a doctorate degree maybe it's getting a certification whatever field that, that you're in i talk about this a lot but it's worth repeating you know one of the best investments that i made in myself back in the day when i was still a practicing financial planner was investing into the CFP certification, which stands for a Certified Financial Planner. That was a monetary investment. That was a huge time investment. Uh, it took me almost a year, and I had to go out of town for like, I think it was like three or four days a week uh, for 11 months straight. Um, not every week, but just about four days a month, I was out of town, away from my family, and uh, it was completely worth it, you know? Did not get him. <laughs> I always tell people that story and they're like, oh, so did you get a raise after you got your CFP certification? I'm like, no, no, I didn't get a raise. But what I got was alphabet suit behind my name. So I had the credentials, which immediately 
just boosted my trust, that trust factor with potential clients. Uh, also helped with being featured in media because I wasn't just a regular financial planner, I was a certified financial planner. So those are ways that you can invest in yourself. And there was a YouTube video, it was I think it was a YouTube short, I, and I really loved this. It was talking about investing, it was either a hundred or a thousand dollars investing into yourself. And one of the ways it talked about was investing into therapy. And therapy sometimes is that word that just, people don't want to admit that they need it. Um, I'll sit here and tell you that I've had individual therapy, I've had couples, counseling couples therapy, and it has been some of the best in, I know I said that about the CFP, but it also was some of the best investments I've made into myself, just unlocking a lot of childhood trauma that didn't realize was trauma until, you know, got much older in my life and be able to process that, you know, cause sometimes man, things happen. You know, when you've got multiple businesses, when you've got four kids, you've got family members that are also struggling emotionally, physically, I mean, life will throw a lot at you. And if you don't have a good spiritual foundation, um, sometimes having somebody to talk to about what's going on can be totally worth it. I mean, you can, I think the most I ever paid for like a one hour therapy point was like 150 bucks, maybe 200 bucks. I'm telling you, man, like every, every time was not a waste of money. And these are just examples of how you can invest in yourself. Now, I think at the root of this question is to remember you can only control what you can control. So when we think about the economy and what's going on with unemployment, what's going on with interest rates, what's going on in the world, like we can't control that. And that is just something to always remember because when we start trying to think that we can control what's going on in the world, what's going on with interest rates, it's not worth it. I think my daughter is trying to do a cameo in the video here. So regards to answering the question, what should you do with the 401k? That's really up to you. But I will say, going looking back in time, so I've been doing this since the mid 90s. And I think about what has transpired in that time frame. Gotta make sure I don't uh, overdo my stakes here as I'm searing them. But a lot has happened. We got Y2K, we've had 9-11. Uh, we've had a lot of things happen. And the market, the economy has held has held up. I mean, we've had some hard times, but we have persevered, we have came through. And that is one of the blessings that I get to see, like what has happened in the market over that time frame. to just remember that. So short term, short term, don't let short term noise affect your long term vision, your long term goals. That's, let me say that one more time. Don't let short term noise affect your long term goals. Like that, that is one of the biggest mistakes that you can make and I've seen it, I've seen it time and time again. So don't make any irrational, panic, chaotic decisions. You know, if this still doesn't give you that comfort, then get advice from somebody else. Keep seeking advice, seeking counsel until you finally have that answer that makes you feel comfortable so that you don't jeopardize your financial future. All right, y'all, I gotta get back to my stakes before I overdo them because my family will kill me. Until next time, this is Jeff Rose reminding you that it's your money, it's your life, and only you can make it awesome. Until next time, peace. Were you trying to do a cameo in my video? Yeah. Did you make it, make a cameo? Yeah. Yeah, you did. Can you say peace out? Peace out. Smash that like button. Smash that like button. Subscribe. Subscribe. Hit that notification bell. Hit that notification bell. <laughs> Boom. Boopy.